Howdy folks! I have a couple of ideas for research projects and a couple other applications running through my brain for a colorimeter and I didn't have one so I went ahead and made one on the cheap. For under ten dollars for parts that I didn't already have I uh, put one together and for those that do not know what a colorimeter is uh, you probably should go ahead and google it but just a quick definition for this application I'm using uh, measuring the absorbance of light to determine the concentration of a colored solution. So, um, and this is just the first video of two. The, this one is going to cover the, the hardware and kind of the nuts and bolts of the, the unit. And the second one will be a quick demonstration of it in use. And uh, so that'll probably answer some questions too. So anyways, let's take a quick look at it. I'll move the camera here so it's be a little easier to see without me holding, having to hold it. Let me check that out. I, th I think that's uh, I think that's pretty good. All right. Uh, basically, it's just a wood box, and I painted it black inside and out to help uh, keep ambient light uh, from interfering with anything. It has a power switch to, to power the whole thing. And basically the, the left side has to do with the, uh, the light source. And there's a selector switch. I have different options. And basically you want to use a wavelength that is most uh, sensitive to being absorbed for the application or the solution that you're looking at. And uh, this is a six position uh, switch and I'm using four at the moment and uh, kind of the whole idea of this is, is kind of a work in progress and be able to add different uh, things to it and in this case uh, maybe different light sources but what I went with or what I do have is a, a white uh, light which is actually from a, a plain white uh, LED and that would be helpful if you have maybe a dark type uh, solution or if you're looking at the turbidity or something like that if you want to measure turbidity. Uh, there's also a red, green, and blue uh, options and I got those actually with a tricolor LED and uh, here's one that's not installed. Uh, the, the long uh, leg here is actually for uh, is the common and each of the other uh, legs are for each of the color. I think this is red, green, and blue. And I was hoping to be able to, to power all of them at once and come up with a white LED, but it, it doesn't work that way. So I put in a separate white LED. I looked at uh, some other options too and just decided to, to go with the LED first because it was quite easy to do. But you could also put a broad spectrum uh, source like a incandescent bulb and that will give you a wide range of, of uh, wavelengths uh, throughout the visible spectrum and what you could actually do this I actually saved from a eons ago from a discarded uh, colorimeter and you see it has different filters so you could actually use a broad spectrum uh, light source and run it through the different uh, filters and you see they actually have the wavelengths uh, marked down here uh, that would be appropriate for your sample but for what I did I, I just uh, thought it would be just easiest to use a tricolor LED and that's what I did. I also have a intensity switch here which will actually uh, turn up and down the, the lamp uh, if you have a <clears throat> fairly weak series of solutions that you're looking at and you want to use the full range of the detector you might want to uh, actually tone that down and conversely if you have a very uh, dark sort of solution you might want to crank that up so that's there and available. Uh, the center section is actually a sample holder and uh, that's where you, you place your sample. The light source is actually shining through. In this case I decided to use a clear tube. Most commercial type uh, colorimeters actually use a cuvette and I left a space right right here below it where I could actually put in a, a spot to put in a cuvette if I wanted to do that and I might at some time. A, a cuvette is actually a 
a cylinder that has a instead of round like this tube, it's a, 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 a long tube that's square in cross section or rectangular, and the light actually hits uh, perpendicular to the to the surface, so there's no refraction or anything like that and come straight out the, the back side too which is perpendicular to the light but I think for for what I want to do uh, this is going to be plenty plenty fine uh, then on the right side this has to do with the detector and basically there's a uh, it doesn't measure absorbance we're, we're actually measuring transmittance right here and it's going to be read on a one milliamp meter and there's two different adjustments here. There's a coarse, and these are just uh, potentiometers, just variable resistors, uh, a coarse and a fine, so I can actually uh, uh, put whatever range, put the range wherever I want it uh, based on the sample and the light source and everything like that. So, uh, anyways, but the, the actual detector is a uh, cadmium sulfide cell, uh, uh, actually a photoresistor, and there's there's a number of different uh, options that you can use. Forrest Mims uh, of Radio Shack fame, he has some manuals that deal with different sensors, and that was a a good source. But uh, I looked at a using a solar cell as the detector, and it worked worked pretty well. But it's such a small beam and the it seemed like the photo cell was very sensitive on where exactly that beam hit on it and I didn't want uh, that variation uh, possibly creeping up but uh, I think it would have worked pretty well uh, they also mentioned things like uh, photo transistors and he even mentioned using a LED uh, not only can it make light he says it can actually uh, uh, make a current from light and I, I, I tried that and I thought it would be great to have the, the ex, exact same LED being the source and also being the detector since it would be the, the same sensitive, sensitivity to the same wavelength. But uh, even with a circuit for uh, magnifying or uh, amplifying the, the signal, it still wasn't the uh, sensitive enough compared to uh, like a photoresistor. And the photoresistor I actually got from one of these discarded, I, I trash picked a bunch of these discarded solar lights. They actually have a solar panel and uh, a photoresistor in them. So I took a couple of those out and stole those. So that, uh, that didn't cost me anything. So anyways, let's take a look at the inside. There's not really much to see, but we'll look at it anyways. Uh, it's, it's all powered by a 9-volt battery here. And I made it actually to be kind of a work in pro progress or modular. So you see here I, I actually have the white LED mounted above the tricolor LED. And uh, they're actually there's a, a channel or a hole going across the, the tube to shine through the tube and they're actually bolted on so that this whole piece of uh, board here is actually you know I can actually take it off and my thought was to replace it with a different light source if I wanted to or I could move it over to, to this half if I wanted to put a cuvette uh, sample holder here so it's very much a work in progress or, or could be if, if I need to uh, once again, on the, the opposite side is the light sensors, and these are the photo resi resistors. I, I have one for each side, and, and they're they're identical. They they have the same uh, sensitivity and everything. So one's just for the you know the, the light source on top, and one's for the bottom. So, anyways, that's it. I hope uh, I hope I covered everything. And as you can see, it is really really a simple build. I mean. Basically a, a uh, power source with a 9-volt battery uh, going through and actually uh, powering the LEDs. There's you know the appropriate uh, resistance there to, to operate the LED. You know the potentiometer. This is the, the, the selector switch, the on-off power. 
and the uh, same thing here the, the two potentiometers that have to deal with the uh, photoresistor so current from the 9 volt battery is going through the photoresistor through the amp meter and being uh, toned down to or scaled to wherever I want it with the potentiometers so that's about it so tune in for the next video and we'll fire it up and uh, analyze the solution thanks a lot and uh, have a great day